Massachusetts University All New Physics Review. Today we're going to be talking about anamorphs. Brought to you by Jeanette Powers and Adam Clark. So what we have here is a cylindrical mirror. We created this by taking a cardboard tube, cutting out a mylar to the appropriate size, a piece of mylar, which is a flexible mirror to the correct size, wrapping it. And now when we look at this, we know that there must exist some warping of a picture that when it reflects back up into the mirror will appear correct instead of warped, like the text is warped and backwards right now. So the first thing we did was take this drawing, which you can see it's 12 units across and 17 units high. We want to translate this into a warped image so that when it reflects into the cylindrical mirror, you're going to see this image on the mirror's surface. So the first thing we realized is that we need to map the straight lines that are horizontal to arcs of a polar coordinate grid and the vertical lines get mapped to the rays centered at the origin. So making a 12 by 17 grid, we trace over and make it and warp everything out. So now we put the mirror in its pre-marked spot, we have the original image back from the warp. So our conjecture was correct. There is a mapping that exists that will put a regular image on a cylindrical mirror. So since this is famous through the years as something artists have done, I went ahead and took this drawing and did a painting. Here's the painting right side up. It looks like a regular painting. There's a little bit of distortion going on, nothing that artistic license doesn't allow. But we're going to flip it over. We're going to put our mirror back on its little spot. And now you have a complete anamorphed piece of art by Jeanette Bowers. So here's how the physics or the optics of this system actually works. We're going to go back to our blank page. Here is the cylindrical mirror. Here are light rays coming in from a distant source so that they're paraxial. Each of these light rays is going to hit this surface at a different angle because the, the surface is circular there at any given point. So it comes up through here. Then we know from the optics class that light rays hitting a surface bounce back in such a way that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection about the normal line to the point at which the light strikes the surface. Since we're working with a cylinder, any one slice of that cylinder is going to be a circle. We know that the circle is tangent to the radius at any given point. So you can see where the tangent line is drawn, and you can see that those angles do, in fact, equal each other for each point. And the 90 degree, of course, just reflects right back on itself. Now, to prove visually that this is what's going on, we can take this drawing, put our mirror on it, and you can see that the mirror's not perfect and the tube's not perfect, but for the most part, these rays that are reflected do create the parallel lines going up, which is what we want to translate that warped picture back into a proper upper, upright picture. Now, here's how the picture works. This is how the light rays traveling to the mirror work. But if we just reverse that process, now what was traveling this way is traveling this way, hitting and coming back. There exist rays that when they strike at such an angle, all of them will come back parallel. And it's essentially the same picture, just with the direction of the rays reversed. So if we put images here, then when they reflect off the surface and back to our eye, they'll come out in a parallel form. So an interesting question, there's lots of questions about this project. One is what would happen to a simple Cartesian grid if put into the mirror? So you can see what happens when we have just a regular Cartesian system right here instead of the polar like you saw with the image. And it creates sort of a, I would maybe call that a hyperbolic picture there. So that's just an interesting aside to it. 
Another interesting aside is that if you have uh, shapes that are fractaline, which means that they have uh, they exhibit self-similarity at all different scales. Like you can't really tell how far close you are to this. It all looks basically the same from different scales. But when we put the mirror on a fractaline surface, we find that fractals too exhibit self-similarity through that transformation in the cylindrical mirror that we've just made. And with that, we'll move over to Adam for part of his presentation. So I drew a frog, and we can see this. Now we have the really big mirror and the digital projection system to show you some awesome images. Our mirror is one foot in diameter this time. This is a picture of Rene Descartes, and he was the person who developed the Cartesian coordinate system. This is a polar coordinate system. Actually, it's a Cartesian coordinate system if you look on the mirror. Oh, how about that? Well, what about polar coordinates, though? Oh, uh, that's a polar bear, Jeanette. Oh, here we go. There we go. That's a polar coordinate system that you can see in the mirror. But look at how it mor morphs when it's flat on the ground. That's really weird. That is weird. Adam! God, look at that handsome man. That's a picture of us constructing the cylinder. And we, after we wrapped the mylar around there, we decided to take some pictures. And then Jeanette actually warped that picture. And then we can take, and then we can show it in the uh, mirror as upright. So you see Chris, Sierra, Adam, and me in the picture. And down on the flat end, you can kind of see us clearly, whereas in the mirror, it gets a little bit distorted. This is a picture that's showing reflection and transmission of light through a glass in the photograph. And then we can distort the image, and we see it upright in the mirror. And we studied that in optics. Here's some other, some other um, optical properties. This we have is a prism. These are prisms, and you can see the light that's uh, reflecting through the glass and, and, uh, and spreading the, out. The reflections in the plane mirrors. Certainly. Here's a picture of Jeanette looking through a hurricane glass full of water. We know that the water is going to have a different index of refraction than the air, so you can see that my face is warped. And in fact, where it appears I'm looking straight at you, with the, in fact, I am looking straight at you through the camera, the glass is showing you half just the profile side of my face. And this looks like a Cartesian grid. Actually, I can't tell what that is. What it is, is a Cartesian grid with a small cylindrical mirror that I took a picture of. Because now, when you look at the flat image, again, you see where it looks flat to you, it looks curved on the mirror. And where it looks curved to you, when it's reflected in the mirror, it looks flat. Oh, now so I see it. Again, that's the relationship between polar and Cartesian coordinates with this system. But in that particular picture, you can see both of them going on at the same time. Oh, here's Melissa looking through a martini glass. And we've got some warping and... Refracting. Refracting. Thing going on and something happening to that eye. It just doesn't look natural <laughs> at all. And there's Melissa again with the hurricane glass full of water. Melissa's starting to scare me. Melissa's beautiful. Oh, here's Jeremiah looking through a very strangely shaped water bottle. That's the best he's ever looked. being refracted. <laughs> now he needs to star in the Goonies. And here's Paul looking through one of those kid toys that break up the light you're seeing into a bunch of little different pictures that simulates a fly's eye. That's a picture of Matt looking confused. Hi, Matt. <laughs> and anytime I look at Matt Littleton, I'm immediately re reminded of God creating man. He is pretty physically perfect, isn't he? So here's a morph of that very beautiful, famous image. That's the scream. By Edvard Munch. And what I think is most interesting about the art is that if you look at the flattened image, just like with my painting from earlier, it could be a complete painting on its own. 
you wouldn't look at that and think, oh, it's completely warped. Like you look at the photographs and think, oh, they're completely warped. And yet, when it reflects back up into the cylinder, that's the original image as O'Keefe intended it. But so much art just has a beauty warped and in its normal presentation. And as our final slide, there's my cat Jethro looking into an infinity.